this, the final chapter of this book and the, the last sermon we'll give on this particular um, whole theme and message is called The Happy Christian. Those are a whole bunch of sad smiley faces and then the one smiling one right there in the middle. <laughs> I wish, I, I pray all the time, and I'm just continuing to believe that God is going to continue to pour out the grace for this, but I just pray and wish that God would give me the words to communicate the depths of freedom that he offers and what this whole thing is about, this whole thing, because I don't have the words. <laughs> I don't. We don't have the words. The Bible itself doesn't fully have the words unenlightened by the Holy Spirit, just on its own. We need the very help of the Holy Spirit to really show us the freedom that this word and this message proclaims. Christianity is marked by joy and thankfulness and enjoying God's presence. That's what it's about. And somewhere along the line, a lot of the church has gotten off track from that. I mean, really. How many times, I know, I, know I, I say these prayers a lot, but how many times do we just, like, God, what is your will in this situation? What is your will here? God, show me your will. I just want your will. Well, there's a very nice little passage in the scripture that sums up the will of God for us. So to everybody that's ever prayed that prayer, God, show me your will, I'm going to answer you right now. I am going to answer you. You're going to finally get an answer to that prayer. Isn't that good news? It's awesome, right? Okay, here we go. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you. In Christ Jesus. Other translations say be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. Now... I'm not going to get into that this morning, but really, that's referring to practicing the presence of God. It's not praying for the president 24 hours a day, okay, and just giving requests off, all right? That's a small part of prayer. Praying without ceasing is constantly enjoying and being aware of the presence of God. It's a constant awareness of, of listening and enjoying the Father, okay? So just being in his presence, just resting in his presence, okay? Be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. And be thankful. In everything, give thanks. And this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As a Christian, this is what it's all about, is joy and thanksgiving and the presence of God. But we have so complicated it. We really have. We naturally do. In the world system that we're a part of, we complicate what Christianity is all about. And this is why I continually ask the Father for the words, like what, what, what is it? I, I got one image as I was preparing for this message that I felt maybe will, will scratch the surface a little bit, but I was just thinking of, of a story. I was thinking of, of like a father and a daughter, right? A young daughter. And uh, a father who is absolutely in love with his daughter. Just, I mean, it's just the prize and the joy of his eyes, the apple of his eyes, Okay prize and joy of his life, right? This beautiful daughter of his. And this daughter gets kidnapped. The home is violently broken into, and these captors come, and they take this father's daughter away, take her away, and bring her to some unknown location, and the father is just left in the darkness as far as what's going on. And what's happening. And this goes on for months, okay? Not knowing where his daughter is, if she's even alive. Two months, three months, four months, okay? Four months ago, a little bit over four months ago, we had the hurricane. All right, can you just think? I mean, I know life goes by fast, and these four months have really gone by fast, but that's a lot of time, okay? That's a lot of time since the, I mean, it, it went by, but it feels like another, an, another lifetime ago for me with the holidays that came and everything else. Like, it's a lot of time. Four months is a lot of time. So I just want you to think about that agony. <laughs> Four months turning into five months, into six months, and seven months, not knowing, going crazy over his missing beloved daughter. Finally, law enforcement gets a tip, and 
and they figure something out and they go to this location, they break in and they find the girl. She's safe, incurred some pain, some emotional, physical abuse, but she's, she's safe. And they bring her home and they call the father and they tell him, we found your daughter. And they drive her right to the front door. I just want you to imagine. I mean, I don't know if we can fully imagine. But I just want you to imagine what would happen when that father opens the door and sees his daughter coming out of the cop car. Can you imagine that? The unbelievable relief that would sweep over him and the emotion that would sweep over him, how he would not let his daughter go, would hug her and kiss her and just absolutely shower his love on her and do everything to acclimate her back into the house, cook a meal for her, send her to bed that night, watch over her, probably stay up all night. (laughs) I would think so. I don't know. I, I don't have a child yet, but I'm starting to understand as I'm as a child is coming, the love that's, that's born in your heart. But I don't think he'd even go to sleep at night. I think he'd just watch over his daughter's room and he would be so thankful, so joyful, so alive that his daughter's returned. I want to let you know that Christianity is the celebration of return. It is the celebration of coming home to the Father. And the utter joy and extravagance and love that the Father showers on his children as we return to him. That's Christianity. That is Christianity. This celebration of a return. Throughout the Old Testament, they have these crazy parties that come every every so often. And there's a few big ones in the Old Testament, really big ones, when they celebrate the Passover. You read these stories, you can read in 2 Chronicles 29 and 30. They have this huge Passover, and all of Israel is invited to the Passover. And there is just this seven-day party. It actually turns into 14 days. They break the law and make it an extended extra week. And they just party and celebrate for two weeks straight an extravaganza of just excitement over the love of God and over this slain lamb. This lamb is slain, that's what the Passover is all about, and this party erupts. And God institutes it as a law that his people are to obey, that they are to celebrate and eat and drink for seven days and rejoice in this lamb that was slain. Well, that, my friends, is a foreshadowing of Christianity. It is a foreshadowing of this party that would erupt as the Lamb of God was slain to set us free from our captor and our kidnapper, the enemy, who enslaved us and stole us from the Father's heart and from his home. And out of that redemption comes this incredible celebration. And Christianity is really the enjoyment of and the overflow of that celebration. But I feel as though it's often turned into something else. The story is completely watered down and switched around. And it's like, you know, there's this missing boy, missing, maybe we'll call him a teenager, and a missing young man who gets a call from his older brother and says, you need to come home right now and... Um, This is the directions to the house. This is what you need to do. If you come back, the father will, he'll receive you. Dad, you know, he's he's looking forward to seeing you. He'll be happy. He'll forgive you. But but just, you know, the the point is get back home because if you don't, there's going to be bad consequences and bad things that are going to happen. And they emphasize, you know, we emphasize the bad things and the consequences. So so this young man comes home to the dad and and says what his brother told him to say in order to get back in the house. And the dad is like, well, okay, I I forgive you. Come here, give me a hug. (laughs) Come into the home. And now let me give you a list of things to do now that you're back in the house. Okay, now that you're home, now let's get to business. 
I got a bunch of chores for you to do. Got a bunch of stuff that you need to do in the morning and the evening, and I want you to take this class, this 101 class on living in home. And what that's all constituted by. I mean, I know I'm making extreme generalities here. But really, it often gets watered down to this. And the love and the joy and the passion of the gospel gets sucked out for just this return to the house so that you can do some work and you can start living the right way. Are you getting what I'm saying here? This difference, this paradigm shift? Tom said it so beautifully. When, when you're free, when you realize that demand, that pressure is not on you, you like to do things. There is a freedom that comes when you learn how to rest in this eternal truth of God's love and in Christ's work on the cross. There is a freedom that overflows. There will be work to do and things to do, but it's in this loving home, in this, in this, in this place of just complete comfort and safety in the Father's house. That is Christianity. And that blows my mind. And that continues to be the passion on my heart for which I just ask the Lord continually, help us to get it. Help me to get it more. Help all of us to come into this revelation, this celebration of what Christianity is, what it's all about. Is that for me? I've just seen it time and time again where people come into church. And Pete, you need to, you need to heed this, okay? You need to get, gain some wisdom here on this, all right? People, they come into church, and they're so excited, this fresh relationship with God. And then all of a sudden, they get told to do all of these things. And they get told, okay, this is what a Christian is. This is what a Christian does. This is, you got you to attend this, this Wednesday night Bible study, this prayer meeting, this thing. You got to come here and do this and do that and stop doing that, especially. And stop doing that and do this. And there's this joy that's lost. There's this joy. That, there's that original freedom that you felt that just gets sucked away by all these things that we need to do. And I've seen it time and time again. I've seen people people that I've loved deeply who were so passionate about the Lord come into a more religious setting and it gets completely sucked out of them, the life and the freedom, and they end up being led into sin. Or if not sin, they get led into apathy and not really caring. And that is something that we feel is so important to protect against, that we just continue to keep the joy and the freedom of salvation, first and foremost. That is what it's all about. If you want a more biblical reference for that, that it's all about joy and gladness and that rejoicing, okay, you can read throughout all of the Psalms and so much of the prophets where it says, rejoice ye in God's salvation. Rejoice ye in God. Be glad in God. The heck is that? <laughs> Be glad in the Lord. <laughs> Be thankful. Always. Rejoice. Always. Constantly. You're constantly seeing this throughout the scripture. This understanding, this awakening to what it's all about. I don't have a... Uh, oh, we're past time. Great. Um, because I was kind of just speaking out of my butt right there. I've just I've kind of said what I needed to say. <laughs> last thing I want to say, last thing, real quick, is that we are in a reformation of thinking. And, it, and it's so much wilder and so much... Jay, you guys can come, can come up because we're going to close. Um, there is a reformation of Christianity happening that I believe as it gets full steam, we're just kind of, we're, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg right now. But as this becomes full steam, you're going to start to see the drasticness, the craziness of it, okay? In the original Reformation, if anybody here knows church history and knows the incredible change and shift that happened in the 1500s, when you compare the Roman Catholic Church at that time to what erupted out of that, something completely new, really not new, but forgotten, 
but something completely new to the people at that time, a completely different structure and setup and theology, everything. It was wild. It was offensive. It was scary. People died over it. It was wild. We are in the midst of a reformation like you cannot believe. There is a reformation, and this reformation is a primary understanding of the gospel and what the gospel is all about and what Christianity is all about. And for those of us who have eyes to see, okay, and ears to hear, I want to share something with you. Some people might scoff at this and say it's all coincidence, but I want you to know that there are signs that point to what's happening on the earth. There are things that are happening, and I could keep going on what all those signs are. I'll just say something from a few weeks ago, okay? The same week that the Pope resigns, okay, the Pope resigns from his papacy, he steps down, okay, there is one of the largest asteroids to ever come near the earth, as close as it did, that passes by the earth. And in that same week as well, there's a meteor, completely separate from the asteroid, that hits the earth, okay, sends shock waves throughout the atmosphere and blows glass in a Russian city. All right? This stuff is not just coincidence. When the Pope stepped down, or he, he, he had saying that he was going to resign, there was a lightning bolt. Did anybody see this? Did you see? Yeah. There was a lightning bolt that struck the top of the Vatican that was caught on camera. Oh, my gosh. Right on the top. And people were like, what does this mean? Is it a sign of judgment? And one cardinal, who I believe had the Spirit of God on him, <clears throat> said something to the reporters that were asking, is this judgment? And the cardinal said, listen, I really don't know what this could mean, if it means anything. But what I feel is that this means great change is coming to the church. I mean, if that is not a prophetic word, <laughs> I don't know what is. But there is great change. And we're hopping on that freedom train. And we're going with it. But it is going to be a reformation of joy. It's going to be a reformation of joy and gladness in the Lord. You can give a clap for that because it is good news.